Welcome to Book of Acts Now, Global School and Global Church. We're glad you've joined us today as we are continuing our study in the Hebrew alphabet. Today, this looks a little like a Y with a tail on it. This is Sadi. And the TS here is like pizza, right? Pizza. And so it's unique in its sound. Sadi. And it means desire, hook, or trouble. So we're going to look at some biblical words to see how this letter is used uh, in Hebrew and how it translates into English and how it helps us understand the Bible. So here the word desire, um, we have this letter here is what? This is the resh, and this is the sadi, and this letter here is what? This is uh, he, which means to declare or reveal. So if you put those terms together, the person, and this here, sadi, can, can mean hook or desire. So the person's uh, hook is revealed. So here's what that means. If you have a desire for water and you're in the desert and you're very thirsty, your desire will be revealed. You'll see it. The person's panting, they're thirsty, their tongue is swelling, their desire is revealed, it can be seen. But the same thing is true with other kinds of desire. Some desires are natural and normal. Some are not. And so, for example, a person who is operating out of lust, their, their desire is coming from a foul place, a wrong place. And so whatever their desire is, then it gets revealed. Amen? All right, so then we have the next word here is righteous. And this uh, right to left, again, we have the, T, the, the TZ sound here. And then we have, this is the Dalit with a D sound. And this looks like a P, doesn't it? But it's Kuf, and it has a Q sound. So if you put that together, we have Zadik, D-E-Q. So this would be T-Z-E, D-E-Q. Zadik is how we pronounce that. And it has to do with being righteous or righteousness. Well, what does that mean in the original language? In Hebrew, what does righteousness really mean? Hurt so that the door of covenant follows you. Now, this is very interesting because Dalit here is the place where the blood is applied. It's the place of covenant. And so, wow. What happens is if you are connected to the door, the door of covenant, are hooked, so to speak. Connected is another term we would use. If you're connected with the door of covenant, then his righteousness will follow you wherever you go. It all has to do with covenant. Are you connected with him in your heart and in your home where you live and dwell? Are you connected with him in covenant? Folks, this is why it's so important how we live in our home. It's one thing to go to church and put on a happy face and look like you're a good person. It's another thing how you live in your home. Because how you live in your home is who you really are. Yeah. And so, if you're in covenant with him where you live, the door of covenant will follow you when you leave your house. You get the same idea in Psalms 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High and in the shadow of the Almighty, it says that he will rescue his feet from the, from the fowler, or from the snare. And so if you are abiding with him, and then you go out from your home, from your door, and the door follows you, the glory of God follows you. And wherever the glory of God is, it will rescue your feet. It will cover you with his wings, and it will prevent any evil thing from coming nigh unto your dwelling. Amen. Okay, uh, harvest. What does harvest really mean in biblical terms? Okay, so again, we have the kuf, which means to follow after. We have here sadi, desire. This means the work of the hand or work. And this is the highest person. And so if you put those word pictures together, Here's what harvest means. Are you ready? We pray about the harvest is coming. Well, what does that mean? Follow the desired work. 
of the highest person. So what is the desired work of the highest person? That all men shall be saved. Amen. And so if his desire is my desire, I'm going to be involved in the harvest because that's what the Savior gave his life for, is that all might repent and come to a knowledge of salvation and be saved. And so I'm a candidate for the harvest when I have his desire. When his desire becomes my desire, I'm a candidate for the harvest. Amen? Now, how do you pronounce this? Okay, so you have a Q, A, this is uh, the, uh, the T-S, I, R, Kassar. Okay, so Zion. You know, lots of things about Zion, how that God loves the gates of Zion more than any other gates. So what is Zion all about? Okay, so we have here um, desire, the work, nail, and life. Now think about this. Zion, to desire the work of the nail for life. Now, why would that have anything to do with Zion? You know, I've studied um, Mount Zion, and I've, I've gone to Israel, Mount Moriah. You know, it's the same place where Abraham offered his uh, his son. That whole range, going all the way from the from down in the valley, all the way up to where we believe Golgotha is, that whole mountain is a part of Zion, a part of Mount Moriah. And so the high place there would be, uh, we would say, is Zion. But that's where the Son of God was crucified. And he was nailed to the tree, right? And so you, Zion, another way you could say this is, Mount Zion was waiting and looking forward to when the nail would arrive and appear so that great salvation could be released in the world. That's the word picture. Okay, Lord of Harvest. Here we have a longer word. It's more than three. It's, uh, this is Sidi. This is House Bet. This is um, the Vav, but it has an O sound. And then this is Tav, which means covenant. So if you put that together, what is the Lord of the Harvest? Desire the house attached to covenant. God's house is attached to covenant, rightly understood. And so it's also the Lord of the harvest is called the Lord, the Lord of Shavuot. And Shavuot, this is how you pronounce this, also means the Lord of angel armies. Now how can we connect that idea? The Lord of angel armies with the house of covenant. Because wherever the house of covenant is established, and God is worshipped, guess who shows up? The angels show up. And the Lord of angel armies show up. The Lord of all. So now listen. Luke chapter 10 starts out with pray to the Lord of the harvest that he will raise up labors to the harvest. But that's the English translation. What it really should say is pray to the Lord of angel armies that he will raise up laborers to the harvest, and it's not just talking about men. Laborers to the harvest is talking about releasing the angels into the harvest because he is the Lord of angel armies, and we get to join them. It's a wonderful picture, the Lord of Shalot. It's a wonderful picture of God taking his people who are in covenant with his house, worshiping him, along with the angels and send them out into the field to gather the harvest because guess what? The Lord of angel armies is coming back and the book of Revelation says when he comes, all of his angels come with him. At first at Thessalonians 4.16, it says the Lord shall descend with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. Yes. The dead in Christ shall rise first and those who are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air, and so shall they ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. The grand expectation of the ages in the universe is that the God of all creation is coming back Amen. with angel armies. 
He's going to redeem his people and restore his kingdom completely and eradicate the universe, eradicate the earth of all evil and restore it back to the original design and purpose is the desire of all ages. And so we give thanks, Father, for your great plan, the desire of all ages, that our desire will be revealed because we'll live for the return of Christ. Amen. Righteousness will follow us because we live in covenant at our door and in our hearts. And the harvest will, will go forth. We will desire the highest person the, the, of the harvest. We will seek him in Zion, and we will know and seek the great desire of all ages that he will return and redeem all creation. Father, thank you for blessing us with this revelation of Sadi and what it means and apply it in our life, and we can see you revealed in us because our desire will be seen that we seek to serve you above all else. Amen. We ask all of these things in Yeshua's name. Amen.